once again from a secret undisclosed location known only to the staff and the personnel of the Library of Graphic Literature comes in the Library of Graphic Literature. Yay! With your host, Wallace Ryan. Me. Yay! And I am without my uh, wonderful co-host, Luna, because she's too busy here tonight. And not a big fan of going. <laughs> That's our running joke. Anyway, uh, the next episode actually is going to be the 2023 Grand Tour. Can you believe that? Of the Library of Graphic Literature. So, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. Anyway, let's get right into it because got a lot of stuff here for, for, for today's episode. And uh, uh, we're going to start actually with two omnibuses from Conan. Yay! Anyway, so we got two two volumes here. Let's start off with this one first. Volume 9 of Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel year. This is Conan 274 to 214 to 240. And what if number 16? Uh, this has a lot of art by Val... Smex, who does some amazing artwork. Uh, uh, now there are other people in on, on it too with this one. Uh, he does 214 to 220. Oh, he writes them actually uh, and draws them. But then we have then Ron Lim. Oh no, no. Gary Quaspice and then Ron Lim and Gary Hartle. And then lots of Along with Ernie Chan, Don Perlin, Alfredo El Kayla, of course, and so, so many more. Uh, even uh, uh, Mark Texier does, does some arts here because we're getting right up and into the 1990s. Well, last of the 89s and into the 1990s. Very different time. Uh, but yeah. Uh, you have to check out the Val, Val Simex artwork, and in this one, and it opens up actually with one where he's inked by Alfredo A. Kela, and if he wasn't good enough, Alfredo A. Kela makes it even makes him even better, which is hard because he's he's a darn good artist, and, and one like I say, I should I would recommend that you check out. Heard? I mean, I I I was introduced to his artwork just through through looking at these, and it was just like wow, this guy is good. I, I've come to realize this guy's one of the the big uh, Conan artists. Anyway, so, so lots of great artwork in here. Just so worth picking up. And this, these, of course, this is the last two uh, omnibuses to complete the entire Conan the Barbarian, the Marvel Comics run. So yeah, some great art, well worth picking up well worth checking out check it out so yeah lots of cool artwork here some limb and here a great cover by the way absolutely amazing cover by Higgins and Lee this really has a feel for the early although I, I, I think they should have used the original Conan by Barry Smith up here but yeah absolutely wonderful cover anyway you gotta check it out worth checking out do, 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 do. Worth checking out. So worth checking out. And last, if not least, in the entire parade of Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel Years, da, 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 da. the amazing volume 10 da, da, at the end of the run. So this has Conan the Barbarian 241 to 275. The end. Now, this one has some interesting uh, uh, artwork in it, too. It has, uh, well, Roy Thomas returns for a few issues, um, but the art, uh, Gary Hartle, Mike Doherty, and then Tony Designita, E.R. E. Cruz, uh, Bill Ray, and then of course uh, Ricardo Villagran does a lot of the finishes and he's absolutely amazing. The E.R. Cruz ones are, are worth checking out too. And of course Ernie Chan <laughs> joins in as, as per usual. So, uh, 
Let's have a look here now. This one even has a uh, a uh, Todd McFarlane cover for a Conan issue, which is like, when would that ever happen? But like I say, definitely worth picking. Like all the others, worth picking up. But the Villagra Villagran was a great inker. If there was anyone who could take someone's inks and make them magic, it was that. It was that lad. Look here. This is oh, who is this one? Roy Thomas, Mike, Doctor Ricardo Villagran. There. From here right through to the end, I think he he does most of them. But yeah. An amazing covers. I love love that cover. Actually, the McNeil cover. McNeil covers are actually pretty good. Yeah, definitely worth, definitely worth reading. And I, I guess one of these days now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read every one every one of them. <laughs> so yes, absolutely amazing. Cohen, and this is a Jim Lee actually cover on this one, which is a totally Jim Lee cover, and it's yeah, it's pretty good. That Jim, why they didn't use it, that corner artwork for the other one beyond me. Anyway, so uh, the amazing Conan the Barbarian, just totally worth picking up, just like number one. I mean, number nine, uh, or the number one I did one today. But like all of it, lo I love Conan anyway, and f at last now I have a complete collection of the Conan the Barbarian, the Marvel years. Next up, speaking of Conan the Barbarian, bam, 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 the Sumerian from a Blaze, do, 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 Volume Four, really a Blaze. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, th these are interesting. These are the Conan stories, of course. They're it's of course called the Sumerian because uh, the uh, uh, it's. may be public domain but I guess Conan the Barbarian itself is still uh, trademarked but the artwork in these and the, this is the cool thing about the Sumerian ones is they they stuck as it says uncensored they stuck to the to the scripts uh, the original stories which they also print in these which is kind of neat very different very different approach the original pro stories and the artwork like I say in, in all these uh, in all these uh, Sumerian uh, novels is is pretty amazing so it, uh, well worth so well worth picking up definitely now this is worth waking up in the morning for <laughs> how about that anyway amazing amazing art uh, beyond the black river and hour of the dragon one of the longest uh, Conan tales if I recall <laughs> Anyway, so that's everything Conan related for this show. I mean, what a way to start. Two omnibuses and that. Of course, I, you know, I didn't get the two omnibuses at the same time. I got one I actually had to wait on uh, to back order. And it came around the same time as the others. So, it's just like, might as well do two at once. Why not, hey? Now, let's uh, end off the show with a couple more things from Jeff Lemire, D. Mormston's Black Hammer, Black Hammer Visions. So this is cool. It's basically like a like the number one. It was uh, a bunch of uh, different artists take 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 on in this one, uh, this is, which is pretty cool. Kelly Thompson, art by Leonardo Romero, Cullen Bunn, and Malachi Ward and Matt Malachi Ward and Matthew Sheen, Cecil Castellucci, Melissa Duffy. Scott Snyder and David Rubin, who does amazing art. So anyway, there's uh, four uh, four issues by by those folks. So basically, they just take you know it's their own take on various characters from the uh, from the Black Hammer universe. So I'm still backed up on my Black Hammer reading, but I'm getting close to this. So I got this one in Volume One in my reading stack here now, ready to go. So this one, like I say. Definitely worth it. Anything by Jeff Lemire, especially anything Black Hammer related, uh, I would put to the top of my list <laughs> in terms of running out there to buy. So yeah, check it out. Looks so cool. I can't. I can't wait to get my paws on it. 
can't wait to get me paws into it. Okay. And in terms of books, the last book, and something I bought just today, because it just arrived at the comic book store today, The Battle of Halo Jones, yay! Full Color Omnibus Edition by Alan Moore and Ian Gibson, Barbara Nocenso. Um, this, of course, comes from a long time ago, from, uh, it's from 2000 AD, uh, which is pretty cool. It's, uh, I'm assuming it's the entire, because it says it, the entire, uh, this is the Ultimate Edition. But uh, this is one of Al Moore's uh, pieces I actually haven't written, because I've never been able to get a copy of it. <laughs> so I'm dying to read this, actually. It's, um, as anyone who watches the show, a big fan of the original writer. Oh, I mean, <laughs> Alan Moore. And... Uh, you know, I don't care how grump, grumpy he is, I still love the guy. Anyway, Halo Jones, just a very interesting looking comic here. The art is amazing. So this would have appeared in the 2000 AD comic, I'm assuming. So this predates a lot of the Alan Moore stuff that we're very familiar with. It just looks so cool. I can't wait to get my chompers into this baby. Chomp, 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 chomp. Artwork looks amazing. <coughs> and of course you can imagine that the story must be really, really super kick-ass. I love the cover too, right? I mean, pink and purple. Come on. We're going to see more like that. <laughs> anyway, so that's that was my big purchase for today. And for anyone living in St. John's, Newfoundland... Uh, you heard me on the CBC this morning uh, talking about, um, let me get it here first, talking about the Newfoundland Quarterly. No, 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 you can subscribe to this. It's actually the oldest magazine in Canada. And the cool thing about this magazine is they have comics. No, 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 no. An even cooler thing about them having comics no, 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 is they have comics by me. Um, I actually do comics for these folks on a regular basis. I have for several years now. And uh, we had a nice little chat there with Joan Sullivan, the editor. I've worked for on many things through through the years. And uh, who's a, who, and who's a, a dream as, as a client. One of my favorite clients. If not my favorite. I think we... Uh, wonderful person to, to work with. Always has great themes and all that. So she comes to me with the, the issue, whatever the theme is for that issue. For instance, this one is happiness and all that. And I basically write my story according to that. Now this, of course, was Love and Happiness. And this is actually a uh, an autobiographical piece called The Ballad of Linda and Wallace. And this is the story of how I first... Uh, about when I met my, my wife and how we ended up got, getting married because... I made her a sandwich and she loved the sandwich so much she asked me to marry her which I said yes and then we eventually uh, uh, I ended up talking to her the next day and figured out okay we do want to get married so we did and this is the final page here so th this this artwork is by by myself of course and the lettering but the coloring the coloring is done by my good friend Paul Tucker who does the art, of course, on the upcoming Stringer graphic novel. But he's an amazing, amazing colorist. I love the, the mood here of the second last panel, the blue panel there, with me and uh, Linda as we sat on the hillside that night after we got married. Oh, then there we are. We looked so cute back then. Anyway, it's uh, check it out if you're ever in this way, or if you can go online and find it there. It's a, it's an amazing, and it's a great magazine, too. There's a lot of great content in there about Newfoundland and that. And I loved it. I love it as a, as, as a constant assignment because the theme is always changed. But it's always something related, for the most part, with Newfoundland and Newfoundland culture. So I get to learn a little bit about my own home homeland uh, while doing it. So that's brilliant. <laughs> anyway, next episode will be... Myself and I am assuming, I guess, Luna, and we will do the grand tour for 2023, which is basically just having a look at all 
<laughs> my my shelves. And I was like, you might say, well, you did one last year. It's just like, well, I did a lot of moving around this year too, and I changed a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of times when I get new books, some stuff stays in the main library here. Some stuff goes into the uh, the second room, um, which I may include. It, it depends how, how much tidying if I if I can tidy it up and get in there. Then I'll show you that too. Anyway, though, the 2023 Grand Tour. Be here or be so square. Anyway, that being said, um, it's back to comics for me for this week. I'm working on a, a story, a script for a little eight-page story, uh, which I can talk about, and working on my next thing for National, uh, the Newfoundland Quarterly, and I'm working on a graphic novel myself, which I've gotten an arts grant for, and it's called automatic and it's kind of like a it's a collection of graphic literature it's it's a graphic novel but it's 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 not in a well i guess it is it's 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 a volume of graphic literature there's poems and there's stories in there and they all work together and it's, it's a story of of my my dealing with grief after my brother passed away just before COVID. so i mean it was bad enough that my brother died Next thing, I'm locked in my house here by myself, and it wasn't it wasn't a fun time. Let's just put it that way, folks. But it's worth reading because there's some cool poetry in it, and and poems done into comics. I know I'm not the first person. <laughs> uh, it's I think of it as uh, very European. <laughs> um, but yes, it, when I look at some European comics, I mean, especially some really heavy metal stuff. There's stuff there that, in my mind, is it's it's poetry. So uh, I fill a, a whole book with poetry, diary entries, and even a discussion on uh, grief and grieving. I'm going to have a chat with my uh, therapist, and, and that'll be part of the story too. Anyway, that being said, uh, it's time for me to split, and hopefully same time next week. And, and I'm going to be try, trying to keep these either on a Monday or Tuesday, release them then. I, I think it's about time for this year. I'm going to try because uh, I know missed a few episodes this the past year, but this year I'm going to even if I don't have any books, I'll, I'll do a fill-in ep episode because <laughs> there's enough books there to do a fill-in episode. That being said, it is time, 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 time. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what about a boom tube? Give me a boom tube out of here. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, good Lord. That has to be the third biggest boom tube I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, and it's pulling me in the direction. See, look. <sighs> Love you, folks. Bye. See you next week. Oh, and don't forget, uh, Thursday Comics. Check out our upcoming editions. We we took a bit of a break after Christmas, but we're coming back. Okay, thank you. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Woo.